I'll play this character forever. I love it. A quote from Tom Holland a few hours ago on the BBC The One Show, where Tom Holland shared his most recent feelings and gave us his most recent quote about the character. Now, the reason I word it that way is throughout the last few months, we've heard a lot of mixed messages coming from Sony, coming from Disney, and coming from Tom Holland about the future of Tom Holland as Spider-Man. And don't get me wrong, as great as he is, and as much as his next movie is going to make a ton of money, Sony and Disney both have a ton of options in the Spider-Man department. And so does Tom Holland, as he's become one of the world's most popular actors following an amazing Spider-Man trilogy. I think he could probably get any job at this point that he really wants to. His price for a feature in a film, whether to star it or just to be in it as a supporting character, has probably gone through the roof. In fact, we know that he's currently in discussions with Disney to be the highest paid Marvel actor of all time. And we're gonna have to wait to hear those figures and how exactly those negotiations work out. But the purpose of today's video is let's talk about the future of Spider-Man. This character who has jumped between Sony's verse and the MCU has a very cemented and important role. That being, he is probably the fan favorite. His movies do extremely well, and his most recent movie has included several different Spider-Man throughout the years and involved many, many generations of Spider-Man fans. So now that he has his new spot up in the spotlight for the future of the MCU and the future of Sonyverse projects, where are they headed exactly? Is Tom Holland going to be involved? And which version of Spider-Man can we expect to see moving forward? Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Cosmic Culture, the channel where we talk about all major movie and television news, theories, breakdowns, and much, much more. I'm your host, Chris, and if you haven't already, consider subscribing and turning on that notification bell. And although I know it is very split, almost evenly, after Spider-Man No Way Home, who is your favorite Spider-Man? Is it Tobey Maguire? Is it Tom Holland? Or is it Andrew Garfield? I've asked this question before, and honestly, the answers really did come pretty evenly and very split. So I'm curious where everybody lies now, now that the movie's kind of receded a little bit and the hype has been retained. Now, if you aren't aware, for whatever reason, there are different versions of Spider-Man. In the upcoming Across the Universe, we're gonna see a few of them, like Spider-Man 2099 and Miles Morales, Spider-Gwen, all of these different characters who are part of the big Spider-Verse. They aren't Peter Parker's rendition of Spider-Man, and although his version of Spider-Man is A, the most famous, B, the most popular, and C, most commonly used, as we've gotten several different franchises of live-action films, animated series, all for this Peter Parker, there are other Spider-Men versions out there. And to be fair, Spider-Women, Spider-Girl versions out there as well, which I think very soon we will be seeing live action versions of these characters, whether it's in Sony-verse or in the MCU. But let's start by talking about the MCU specifically. That's where No Way Home happened. I definitely think Marvel's Cinematic Universe, the Disney side of things, is more popular, if not one of the most popular currently ongoing franchises out there right now. So, based off of the rumors that we've heard and insider confirmations, we will be getting another trilogy with this Spider-Man. And by this Spider-Man, I mean Tom Holland Spider-Man, who, at the end of Spider-Man No Way Home, we saw made his own suit. And even though Peter Parker was no more, Spider-Man was very much alive and well. And he was off doing good, just like Spider-Man is supposed to be, a friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. We're not clear what his connection is with the Avengers anymore, or how well they know who he is, or how they're even going to be able to contact him. However, people know who Spider-Man is, and even though there was a moment there where Tom Holland was either trying to confuse us or surprise us about a new trilogy, we know we're getting another one. I'm not sure if Tom Holland saying he might be done playing Spider-Man was a tactic to get Disney and Sony to give him more money, or if it was something they told him to do to kind of leave a little bit of surprise as to what may possibly happen in the film. Like a possible death, they wanted to leave that option open for us, and Tom Holland saying, yeah, I can't wait to come back and play more Spider-Man, might have taken that off the table. However, whatever the reason, we now know from Amy Pascal, who is in charge of all of the Spider-Man events over at Sony, that we will be seeing another Tom Holland trilogy. And she said specifically the reason why she's telling us at least this is she doesn't want fans to have that separation anxiety like we saw when Tom Holland's Spider-Man was almost pulled out of the MCU because of some bad blood between Sony and Disney. And you'll all remember that happened a few years ago, and there was major panic, I'll use the term panic, because this character, who was a very important part 
part of the MCU, who showed up in Civil War, who already had his own solo film, who was becoming an Avenger, was about to get yanked out of the MCU, and that would have been very unsettling for what has been a pretty perfect story up to this point. But Amy Pascal says, no fans, we are giving you another Spider-Man trilogy with Tom Holland, you're going to have to wait for more details. Now, clearly following the post credit scene of Spider-Man No Way Home, we know Venom is going to have some type of involvement, whether that is in the next movie or a movie down the road. The symbiote that comes directly from the Sony-verse is in the MCU, and I presume the reason for doing that is because they want Venom to be the same Venom? the same ideologies, the same character, the same acts. He's gonna have the same memory and he'll remember Tom Hardy and his universe. And all of that's gonna be stuff that they can mention and connect to the MCU from the Sony-verse. But we'll have to wait and see if that's gonna be Spider-Man 4 or if there's gonna be other villains along the way as well, like a potential Sinister Six, which we did not get in Spider-Man No Way Home, and other resurrections of characters who have been mentioned, name-dropped, and teased along the way in the MCU. We also have to figure out if we're going to get a Gwen Stacy and a Spider-Gwen, a Miles Morales, or if we're going to get Zendaya back, and what exactly the relationships that Peter is going to create and what Spider-Man are going to create, since Peter doesn't exist right now, but you have to assume that he will exist again in the near future. And on that note as well, you have to remember there are other things happening at Sony, like a Kraven the Hunter movie, a Morbius movie that's going to eventually get released. We have a Venom 3 movie coming out. They're currently working on a Spider-Woman movie that Olivia Wilde is directing over at Sony, and we just heard that Dakota Johnson is in talks to play Madam Web. And, of course, people want a Spider-Gwen, a Miles Morales, and a Spider-Man 2099 movie. Now, as for Kraven the Hunter, Morbius, Venom 3, probably Spider-Woman and Madam Web, all of those seem to be taking place in the Spider-Verse, in the Sony universe of super Spider-Man characters outside of the MCU. Venom has returned there, he's gonna stay there. But one of the parts that we get to have the speculation about because we haven't heard any direct answers is Miles Morales or Gwen Stacy. We've had a few different hints at Miles Morales throughout the years in the MCU. His uncle Prowler, who specifically said that Miles Morales exists in the MCU, and of course the really funny interaction between Andrew Garfield and Jamie Foxx's Electro, who said, hey, you're a really nice kid, I thought you'd be black, and Andrew Garfield responds by saying, I'm sorry. This again was a Miles Morales hint, and I do think he's coming, and I think he's headed for the MCU. I would like to think Sony is going to try to take this on on their own and go and make a great Sony Spider-Man trilogy, but the facts of the matter are he's just going to do better in the MCU. It makes more sense, it's more fun, and Peter Parker, Tom Holland's Peter Parker, can be his mentor and maybe kind of raise him come the end of Peter Parker's trilogy. Then Tom Holland can retire as Spider-Man, and Miles Morales can do it. I also heard this on the Cosmic Wonders channel where he was talking about what he'd like to see with Zendaya and maybe a Gwen where he probably doesn't want to see Tom Holland get together with Gwen. He'd rather save that for Miles Morales, have Miles Morales and Ghost Spider or Spider Gwen get together and have their own thing. And let's figure out a way to bring Zendaya back so that MJ and Peter Parker can be together like they're meant to be. Now that doesn't mean that Tom Holland's Peter Parker can't have a little bit of interest in Gwen or that she can't show up, but I think we should certainly save her for Miles Morales, especially if he's just around the corner and Tom Holland's gonna be mentoring him, maybe mentoring Ghost Spider, and they're gonna have this really cool connection for a new trilogy, Miles and Gwen, a cool new Spider-Man spin-off trilogy. There are a lot of options. Sony and Marvel and Marvel Studios have a ton of characters at their disposal. Spider-Man as a character has a very, very thick and and rich lore where many different characters throughout the years have played him in a lot of different capacities. So there are options, but it sounds like first we're getting a new Tom Holland trilogy, Sony's going to continue to do some of their projects off in their universe, and hopefully we will be getting a big Miles Morales and Gwen Stacy live action reveal that I would like to see happen in the MCU. Regardless, it is on the horizon, Tom Holland loves the character, and even though he told us he's ready to play James Bond, He's going to be playing Spider-Man for a few more years, and maybe even a couple team-up movies like The Avengers, The Young Avengers, or wherever else they might need Spider-Man in the MCU. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you watched it till the very end, let me know in the comment section down below. Just say, I watched it till the end. I do appreciate you guys who sit around and listen to me talk for these 10-minute videos, but the information is awesome. We all love Spider-Man, and we all are excited. If you haven't already hit that notification bell, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one right here on Cosmic Culture.